You were tempted? I suppose you would have your doubts about that. I turned toward the windows for a reason. As lightly dressed as I was, the answer to that would have been obvious if we'd been facing each other. Is that why you were walking around in your panties last night? To see if you could get another rise out of me? I... I was curious. Well? Well, what? Did walking around in my underwear get another... rise out of you? Do you want me to bite you again? Do you want me to keep walking around my underwear? If I answer yes, which would be the truth, then we are presented with an interesting problem. Is this where you tell me that a relationship between a bodyguard and his client must remain professional? That would be an appropriate cliché, though not entirely accurate. For one, I'm not a bodyguard by trade. And secondly, in about 99% of fiction where that scenario plays out, they resist with all their might only to surrender their passion for each other in the end. This isn't fiction. But since you put it that way, what is the problem in your mind? Foxes and bunnies don't exactly get along. The current state of the city is unmistakable evidence of that. So you're going to trade one cliché for another? The star-crossed lovers from different worlds struggling to be together against all odds? Lovers, hmm? We could run through a list of very obvious reasons that we should stop pressing the issue. We could, but I would rather not. We both know there's something here, but it's not like I could find anyone else to protect me. And I don't like to run away proven that multiple times. What are you suggesting, Miss Hops? We could go back to the office and bang on a quick one. But not avoiding this doesn't mean we should rush headlong into it either. It is dangerous. Exploring it further might not be wise. But you being in the city isn't wise either. Wisdom is helpful, but it's not the answer to everything. So we should just see where it goes without the typical avoidan uh, avoidance maneuvers? That's one way to put it. In our situation, avoiding the obvious would be a surefire way to make it happen. Anyway, it would just delay and aggravate. Nick, why don't you ever drink what you pour? I'm an alcoholic. An alcoholic? Shouldn't you be avoiding that then? Yes, but that doesn't solve the problem in my mind. Like expecting the law to stop people from saying cute, it's a crutch. Removing something from your life to avoid temptation only means you'll be more vulnerable when exposed. Rather than subject myself to sudden weakness, I expose myself to the desire constantly, until I learned to control it. Until it got easier? No, it never really gets easier. 
I still try to rationalize it. That voice in my head telling me that one drink won't hurt. I'm forced to remind myself that it makes me weak, vulnerable. So, you have no weaknesses? I didn't.